Sairam children, welcome back to our English class. So in today's video, we are going to do the revision of chapter 3. The mountain that ate people. So children, wasn't an interesting story? Yes, we have already completed this lesson. We are just going to revise the whole lesson. Now let's get started. So I hope you remember who is the author of this lesson. So who is the author of the lesson? It was Hema Pandey. So she is Hema Pandey and she is born in the year 1928. And she is interested in, yes, she is the author of children's book best known for her translation of Japanese folk tales. So she keeps translating the Japanese folk tales which have been published in many anthologies. And we also learn some frame the sentences and um, who are the main characters in this lesson? Yes, the future lord, the ink farmer and the farmer's mother. So these three characters were, they are very important in this story. And the next one is... We also learn some new words of this lesson and we are not going to revise those words again. Now let's quickly do the reading of the lesson. So you have to do the reading practice. Now let's start the revision. So you can follow the screen also or if you have the textbook. You can keep open and get ready. Just listen and afterwards do the reading practice. So shall we start? Yes. So long long ago in Japan there was a small state ruled by a young feudal lord who hated old people. What a great nuisance these old folks are. He cried. <clears throat> they can neither work nor think, are utterly useless and should all die after they are 61. So he issued a decree and threatened that whoever broke it would be punished most severely. Oh, what a cruel feudal lord he was. How his people feared him. The terrified people, weeping and sorrowful, were forced to take their old parents when they became 61 to the dense forest on the high mountain near the city and leave them in the cold and rain at the mercy of wild animals. So this mountain came to be known as the mountain that ate people. Soon there was there were hardly any old people left and the feudal lord was jubilant. Now my state will surely prosper. We are all young and energetic and have no age for to hinder any trouble. <clears throat> now there was a farmer who lived with his mother and 
loving her dearly, never did anything without her advice. But alas, everyone grows old with time. Soon his mother too turned 61 and since they had lived in the village all their lives, it was impossible to hide her age. How terribly upset the poor farmer was. Every night he tossed and turned, unable to sleep with worry and fear. Till one day, the mother called him and said, Son, I am now 61. So please take me quickly to the mountain and leave me there. The longer you delay, the more miserable you shall be. And the heartless Lord will punish you fearfully. Don't be sad for me since we must all die someday. Oh, mother, forgive me, sobbed the unhappy man. I cannot do this. But because of her insistence, he agreed to take her at last. Since she was unable to go up by herself, he took her up on his back and with tears trickling down his face, climbed up silently and slowly. The narrow path wound up through dark and desolate forest. Gradually, even the trail could hardly be seen in the fallen dusk. The farmer had to part the tall grasses and lift the overhanging foliage as he climbed higher and higher. Crap! Suddenly, the old mother, perched on his back, broke off a twig from a tree. The curtain is opening so slowly. Yeah. Hardly had the farmer taken a few weary steps more, then crack. She broke another. Again crack. Crack. So the sound kept on increasing. The puzzled young farmer stopped. Mother, why are you breaking so many twigs? He asked. I am breaking and throwing them down, replied the mother calmly. I know that I will not be alive by tomorrow. But it will be extremely dangerous if you lose your way returning home. Yes. Just now it's dark. When the moon rises, you will find your way back safely following these twigs through this dismal forest. Hearing her loving words, the farmer wept bitterly as he held her down to the stony ground. Mother, mother, he cried. Even at such a terrible time as now, how can you still think of me even though I'm carrying you to your deaths? He sobbed. There is nothing strange about my thoughts, smiled the mother gently. I was so joyful when you were born 
and never minded any hardships to bring you up. My son, it's very natural for me to take care and think of you. Never, never I will I leave you, mother, in this dreadful place, cried the farmer. I will gladly accept my punishment from the feudal lord rather than let you die here. And he picked his mother up again. So, both of them returned down the mountain that ate people and quietly hid among the bushes of the edge of the forest. So, when the entire village was fast asleep, they crept back stealthily to their little home. The farmer worked hard day and night, digging up the floor within the house. He made a small room under the ground, hid the old mother in there and looked after her well. During the day, he tended his wheel cheerfully as usual, never letting anyone know this dreaded secret. A year passed. Yet another. One day, the mighty overlord of the neighboring state came thundering with his army and horses and back war against the feudal lord, defeating him. Now, the defeated feudal lord pleaded for his people again and again. At last, the victorious lord took pity on him, saying, If you solve correctly the problem I set you, the lives of your subjects will be spared. But when the feudal lord heard the problem, he was at totally dumbfounded. Calling his nobles, he sent a proclamation throughout the land that whosoever could solve it would be richly rewarded. The problem was, take a thousand strings, tie them into a bundle and burn it to ashes. And how can you then bring the bundle to me completely intact? An impossible riddle. So many days went by, but none could think of a correct solution. The farmer too heard of it and returning home told his mother who laughed heartily. Don't you worry, son. I will tell you, make a bundle out of a thousand strings, soak it in sea water and dry it well in the sun. Even if this is burned to ashes, it can still be carried intact to the mighty overlord. The farmer, the farmer ran to the court of the feudal lord and bowing low told him what his mother had said. How thankful and relieved the lord was. He praised the farmer and gave him lots of money and lovely presents. After some time, the great overlord sent a messenger to the feudal lord with another problem, which was more, much more difficult. How is it possible to pull a silken thread through a narrow pipe with seven bends? 
If you cannot reply correctly, said the messenger, my overlord will ransack your entire state. The feudal lord, trembling and fearful, again set a proclamation across the land. Hearing it again, the farmer hurried home to tell his old mother, hidden away in her little room. It's very simple, my son, said the mother. Let our master get a narrow pipe made with seven bends. Place it on the ground and put plenty of sugar at one end. Then tie a silken thread round a large and and release it at the opposite end. Surely the ant will pull the silken thread through the pipe, not only through seven bands, but through seventy. She added laughing. Thank you, mother, thank you, cried the happy farmer. He ran fast as he could to tell the delighted feudal lord who rewarded him with bags of gold and precious gifts. Time passed and ate one more. The wicked overlord sent his messenger to harass the feudal lord with the harder, hardest problem of all. The great lord wishes you to make him a drum that will play itself, announced the messenger. The feudal lord was fortified. Who is there that can tell us how to make a, such a wondrous drum and save our lives and land? He wailed. The farmer turned again to his mother for advice. My son, this problem is easier than the others. She smiled. Make an ordinary drum and put some bumblebees inside. Before covering the sides with paper, take it to the overlord and it will play merrily without being touched. Oh, mother, how wise you are! cried the excited farmer and read the feudal law to tell him. Yes, the Lord was overwhelmed with joy and taking off priceless strings of pearls and rubies from his neck, gave them to the farmer. But suddenly, he stared hard at the young man. It is wonderful that you are able to solve such difficult problems, he said. Surely, you cannot be so wise to think of the answers all by yourself. Tell me honestly, who has helped you? The farmer quacked with fear, but he bowed before the feudal lord and spoke courageously and with conviction. Yes. Mighty lord, I have disobeyed you and have kept my old mother hidden away at home, he said. It's really she who has given you the correct answers to these problems and has saved our lives and strayed from the overlord. Please forgive me. Was the feudal lord angry? No, no. He realized 
the value of the great wisdom of old people and his folly in sending them away to the mountain to die. At once he withdrew the cruel decree. So from that day no old people were ever taken to the mountain that ate people and they lived happily with their children and grandchildren. Moreover, the powerful overlord, being extremely impressed by the wisdom of the feudal lord and his subjects, gave up fighting and all lived together in peace and harmony. So, isn't a wonderful story, children? Yes, it's very nice. Now, let's go through some exercises. So, here I've given the summary. So, if you want to go through the story once again, you can open the video, pause the video and go through the summary. So this is the second slide of the summary children. And there's the third slide. So you can slowly read the summary of the lesson. And now we have some answer the following. Let's quickly go through this. Number one, why did the people, what, sorry, what did the people do to their parents when they turned 61? So the people took their parents to the dense forest on the high mountain near the city and left them in cold and rain at the mercy of wild animals. And... Uh, how did the farmer's mother climb the mountain? Since she was unable to climb by herself, the farmer took his mother on his back as he climbed the mountain. <clears throat> Number three, while the farmer and his mother climbing the mountain, what was the latter busy doing? The mother was busy breaking the twigs and throwing them down so that her son could follow the trail and find his way back home. And number four. Why did the feudal lord revoke his decree? Answer, the feudal lord revoked because he realized that the old people are wise and should be valued. And number five, how did the mountain eight people get its name? The mountain got the name because the old people are left orphan. And they met their deaths at the hands of the wild animals. Number six. Why did the farmer defy the decree? 
What does it tell us about him? The son defied the order because he did not want to see his mother die. He realized how much she loved him and he wanted to save her life. This tells us that he had a great love for her as well as strength of character. In number seven, what was the first question that the overlord asked? And what advice did the farmer's mother give? The first question was how to burn a bundle of thousand strings to ashes and yet keep the bundle intact. The farmer's mother said that the bundle had to be soaked in seawater and should be dry before burning. Question number eight. What was the question posed by the overlord about the drum? And what was the answer suggested by the farmer's mother? Answer. The overlord wanted a drum that could play by itself. The farmer's mother suggested that they take an ordinary drum and post some bees, bumblebees to it. They have to put some bumblebees to it. They would move inside the drum and make it seems like the drum was playing itself. What a brilliant idea. Yes. Now, what important lesson did the feudal lord and the hover lord learn? They learned that the old can be wise and their wisdom must be valued. So here we come to the end of the lesson and reference to context is already we have done children. So if you want you can just have a look. So the sentence from the lesson soon there were hardly any people left and the feudal lord was jubilant so why were there very few, few people left yes because they have to leave their families on the mountainside to die what's the significance of soon it emphasized how to complete the feudal lord's tyranny. Why was the feudal lord jubilant? Because there were hardly any few people, old people left. This activity is already we have completed. So here we'll come to the end of the revision of this lesson children. So do open the video, pause it, learn the summary and learn the question answers and the notes will be sent later on. Until then, stay home, stay safe. Bye bye children.